Hello everybody, welcome to part one of this uh, series on sorting specs for the Specsort project. Whether you're an old hand at sorting specs or if you're new to the project, we want to introduce you to what should be taking place and the kind of things that we want you to look out for when you're going through the process. So to start with, we're going to be looking at, specifically looking at the spectacle frames. And they come in different shapes and sizes and materials. But the ones we want you to keep uh, are most important. So to start with, this is a molded plastic frame. It's what we call a four rim frame. It's got built in molded nose pads and you'll notice it's nice and strong and this one has got sprung sides and we want you to keep these. You'll also come across metal frames again four rim metal frames with nose pads and we want you to look to make sure both nose pads are there and again this one's got sprung sides nice and robust we want you to keep these. You will come across other types of spectacles. For instance, this is a sun spec. It's a molded one piece sun spec with what we call a graduated tint here. We prefer not to keep these. These are too specialized for our use. Uh, we tend to concentrate on just providing prescription spectacles without tints to our clients who are donating spectacles to in Africa. The kind of things we don't want to keep. To start with, this type of frame where you'll notice there's apparently no rim at the bottom. In actual fact there is a nylon cord running around the bottom of the frame and the issue is here that the nylon cord may perish, especially in hot climates where it's moist the nylon won't survive and if you notice here if the nylon fails then the lens is going to drop out so we ask you to discard any supra lenses but please note that supras come in different types uh, this is a case where you'll notice the frame is at the bottom but here the nylon cord is running around the top so I'll just turn this around so you can see it. So there's the nylon cord running around there. Again, if you come across anything like this, please discard the frame. The other type of frame we ask you not to keep are rimless frames. The reason being is that you'll notice that the lens in the rimless frame is in actual fact the frame itself, it's providing the support. And whereas in this example, the frame is flexing, what we don't want to happen is for the lens itself to break at these location points here, especially if it's been glazed with the wrong material. So to play on the safe side, to stay on the safe side, we ask you to discard this type of frame. So having looked at the frame and also at the same time looking for any superficial scratches on the lenses. We want you to look through the lens and we want you to keep specific types of spectacles. Now examples of frames that we don't want you to keep. Again I've mentioned here rimless, but if you look at this lens, again it's a rimless and we would normally discard this, but you'll notice here that we have a bifocal lens, i.e. there's a top and a bottom to the lens, and in this case we have what we call a D-segment 
It looks like a D if it's on its side. And regardless of whether it's a D or a C or an E that goes all the way across, we want you to discard that type of lens. Another type of lens we want you to discard are very focal or progressive lenses. So I'm going to peel my own off here. And if you look at my lens, if we move it from side to side, and, and look at the image of the curtain behind me, then you'll notice that what, was, what is happening here is that you can see that the lower part of the image is moving more than the top. And this is because in the very focal lens, as with the bifocal, there's a different magnification, a different power of lens at the top from the bottom. So we want you to discard anything that shows that type of characteristic where there's a different magnification between the top and the bottom. Now, there are also other specialist types of lenses that are in day-to-day -day use. And this is an example um, of a lens, and I'm going to hold this up for you to have a look at. And what I want you to see is that the image appears to be at an angle. Now what I'm going to do is rotate the lens around its middle point. And so what we're looking at here is a scissoring effect of the lens as we rotate it. Now if I compare that to the other side, you'll notice that there's no scissoring effect or very little compared to the left eye and looking at the right, there's very little. So don't assume, by the way, that both eyes are going to be the same. Now, the reason this is sciss scissoring is because the person who is wearing these spectacles had something we call astigmatism. And in actual fact, there are two lenses superimposed on top of each other in this lens to correct the astigmatism and we call that sill. And if you look at the instrument behind me, which is a facimeter, and if I just nudge it back into action here, you'll notice that it's got a minus 450 sill on this lens. So that's part one. So just to run quickly through it again, that we want you to keep four in frames, whether they are plastic or metal, but discard supras, discard rimless frames, and then anything that has got a bifocal, a very focal, or a high amount of sill in the lens. Now, there is one exception to everything, and that is that if you come across anything that is gold material, we ask you to set this to one side in its own separate container. The reason being is that Rotary processes this gold and uses it for the N Polio Now project where we're providing vaccinations for children in three specific countries to try and exterminate the polio virus. Thank you for listening to part one. I hope you found it interesting. Happy spec sorting. Hello, this is part two of our spec sort series video and in part two we're going to be talking about how we measure the power of the lenses that are in each pair of, of spectacles. There are two types of facimeter. There's the manual facimeter where you actually have to look down an eyepiece and then there's an auto facimeter where we have a screen and where the device actually does a lot of the work for us in producing the measurement 
that we require. There are various defaults that we ask you to work to. The first is that we would like the instrument to be set up so that it measures the cylinder correction, the sill here, in minus format. And so on most instruments you'll have a menu, as we have here, and in going through the menu, menu you will find that you can either set the instrument to a plus or minus sill. The other default we ask you to use is to set the instrument to measure in 0.25 diopter steps. Most instruments will also allow you to measure in 0.125 steps or even 0.01 steps. We ask you to measure in 0.25 diopter steps. So if you can set those two items up to start with, that would be great. The other thing we want you to do is when you're noting the power of the lenses, we want you to write the right lens first and then the left. This is the industry standard and what dispensing opticians around the world will be looking at and they'll be checking for to make sure that they can use these lenses for the people we're donating the spectacles to. So I'm now going to start talking about using the facimeter. And you'll notice here we have our display. In this case, I have a button that says clear, which allows us to reset the instrument to zero. In some cases you will find that there's a print facility here, but sadly in the case of this facimeter, I've not got any paper in place. This allows us to move between the left and the right lens. And here, this add button here is only used for when we have a varifocal or a bifocal lens. And since we're discarding varifocals or bifocals, we will not be using this during the course of this video. So I've got one or two example frames here and uh, we're going to be looking at measuring these. So, as I say, we always start off by measuring the right lens first. So I'm going to put that on the instrument, and you'll notice I'm lowering it down onto this conical device here, under which it sits the lens, and then my aim is to get this cross in the centre of the screen. And at the same time, I've got a handle here, which is moving this table backwards and forwards. Now, what you'll see here is that the facimeter has recognized the power of the lens. And so it's minus 0.25 with a minus one diopter sill at an axis of 92 degrees. And what I'm now going to do is move the nose piece slider across, put the lens down, recenter the lens, and just realign the table slightly. And again, I can take the frame away from the facimeter, and now I have my right and my left measurements. Now, we'll be coming on to talk about what we keep and don't keep in part three, but just a heads up that the difference between these two spherical powers is too great, and also the sill here minus 450 is too large for us to be able to use. So this frame having passed the initial inspection, that is that it's a four in frame with two nose pads, it's in reasonable condition, it's got two working sprung sides. We cannot use this frame because of the difference in power between the two lenses 
and because of the large amounts of sill we have here at minus 450. So moving on to another frame. So I'm going to press clear here. You notice that everything is reset now. Again, I'm going to check the right lens first. And then move across to the left. And again, you'll notice that we have the prescription of this lens on screen. And it so happens, as in Blue Peter, I've already written the power down. And what you can see here is that the right lens is minus 875 with a minus 025 sill at... I've got 55 degrees here, but the instrument's telling me 60. And on the other side, it's a minus 1175 diopters minus 050 sill at 42. And so the process continues. And in part three, what we'll be discussing is how we make a decision as to what, what lenses we keep and those that we reject. Thank you. So this is the final part of our Specsort video. And what I want to do is to introduce you to a set of instructions that will be sent to you to actually help you with the process. And the pages here will determine the stages we've been through already, i.e. stage one, the raw material. Stage two, which we've not discussed yet, but we actually have to wash the spectacles before they are measured on the facimeter here. And then once they've, or whilst you're using the facimeter, it is quite important that you refer to Appendix 1 here, which tells you about the selection criteria and how we want you to write down the power of the lenses on the envelope. There's a benefit to you doing this because it allows the libraries to be put together very simply. And also when the spectacles are in country, then the process of donating the right spectacle to the right person is very much simplified as well. So when you looked at the videos, including part three here, where I'm talking to you, what we want you to do then is to go through the two sheets of paper um, that you'll be given or you've downloaded off the internet and just go through it and make sure that you're happy with the entire process before you start. If you've got any questions, do come back to Ruth or myself, and then we'll be able to answer your questions. Thank you for participating in Specsort. We do value your time and your input. Thanks again.